Hello and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail and we have an extremely interesting and important um, program for you today. My guest is a lady named Donna uh, Wysokensky. Did I pronounce it right? Okay. And Donna, um, I probably should warn you, if you see somebody, run into somebody um, that looks just like her and you think it's her, um, it might not be because she has an identical twin sister named Doreen. So uh, just thought I'd mention that for the fun of it. Um, and we're going to do a program today on uh, green cleaning, an introduction to safer and cheaper home cleaning products for your home. Thank you for coming on. You're welcome, Gail. Donna, um, did you want to say anything to the viewing audience before we go on to your PowerPoint? Well, um, this, this program is going to talk a little bit about, and it's an introduction, so the topic of cleaning um, with safer cleaning products is actually a very dense one. You can read a lot about it, but we're going to introduce the topic to you. We're going to tell you a little bit about the health impacts, about um, the kind of cleaners that you may see in your cupboards right now, and then we're going to talk about safer products, why they're safer, and finally we're going to give you some recipes for green cleaning that you can use around your house and uh, hopefully be able to clean your house in a safer, cheaper way that's better for the environment. So I guess we could start with the okay. PowerPoint. Okay. Green and Clean, an introduction to safer and cheaper home cleaning products for your home. And before we go to the next slide, I'd like to ask the listening audience, um, how much do you think you spend on cleaning products every month? So you may want to think about that as we talk. You might also want to think about this. What do you have in your cupboards right now? And have you ever experienced some kind of health impact from using them? Maybe you have watery eyes or you got some kind of rash on your skin. And in some more serious cases, it could lead people to an asthma attack if they have asthma. So in the next slide, um, I'm wondering if you've ever heard anyone ever say these things. My bathroom isn't clean until I smell bleach. I always buy hand soap with disinfectants to keep away all the germs in my house. I really love all these products on the shelves these days because all those fragrances, they make my house smell so good. So these are topics we're going to be talking about as we go along with this program today. And by the end of it, maybe you'll have some different ideas about these topics that we just asked you. So on the next slide, here are some things you may want to think about. According to the EPA, toxic chemicals in household cleaners are three times more likely to cause cancer than outdoor air pollution. I've heard that. that um a lot of people actually get their cancer from the house cleaning products that and, they use. Right, and it's a little bit hard to, to trace a long-term chronic disease like cancer with one product. Right, but it's, it's it, probably usually a combination of things. Yes, yeah. yes, and actually as we are luckily making our houses tighter, so we're making them more energy efficient, but we also need to be aware that as we uh, you know, plug all the drafts in our house, we're also keeping in all the toxins in our house. And so a lot of times people don't think about that and maybe want to think twice about what they introduce in their house now that it's more energy efficient. Right, so right. So that's something to think about. Uh, the next point is that um, exposure to household cleaners are really um, a big source of poisoning for young children, especially children under the age of six. And um, these could be bleach, and bleach is actually one of the most common causes of poisoning with young children, and spray bottles. So you'll see that a lot of um, cleaning products come in spray bottles, and you can imagine a little child with a spray bottle thinking about it and using the little trigger and spraying their eyes or their friend's eyes with it. Well, they might think, they might see their parents using uh, the cleaners. Right. And 
it doesn't occur to them, well, they don't even know at a really young age like that. They've never really heard of poison or anything. True. And, and, and they're not thinking that their parents are going to be doing something dangerous. And most parents also want the best for their kids. So um, as parents, you know, most parents know to keep cleaning supplies out of the reach of their children. Mm -hmm. but. As with any household, it's sometimes chaotic, and you forget. You might mm -hmm. leave it somewhere on the side. You might forget to put it away. And yeah. therefore, that's a problem for children. And sometimes, like, when you think about these kind of cleaning supplies, you might say to yourself, well, who are the most vulnerable populations that we could worry about? And these are children, as I've said. And so if you think of a child, um, you think of them as crawling on the floor, putting their hands in their mouth, putting their, touching everything that they can because they're exploring their environment. And it's essentially this behavior that makes them very vulnerable. Plus they have little bodies, right? So every breath of air that I take as an adult, um, I have a much bigger body than a child. But a child is their, you know, nervous systems and circulatory systems are still evolving and growing. So they're not quite set, and they have, every time they take a breath, if they inhale a toxin, they get a lot more per body weight than an adult would. So that all makes them much more vulnerable. Plus elders, um, they may have some um, respiratory issues like COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary mm -hmm. disorder. Mm -hmm. And then people that have asthma certainly mm -hmm. should worry about these sorts of things. There seems to be quite a lot of people with uh, various different kinds of dementias these days too. And, and they, uh, uh, people whose brains aren't working properly uh, quite often do things they shouldn't do also. That's a good point too. Yeah, they may, may forget the dangers of certain mm -hmm. products mm -hmm. and then put themselves again in danger. Right. So that's a good point. So when you, some other things to think about that a lot of people maybe have never thought about before is in the last 60 years, people have estimated that there's been about 85,000 new chemicals that come into the market, have come into the market. That's way too many. <laughs> and um, this is because we're, you know, we are consumer culture and we need, and they're updating their products. And health testing is not done on all these chemicals. But when it is done, um, the way that this works is that these health testings are done only on a single chemical. But the point is, if you go to the grocery store and you look at a bottle, um, any bottle mostly, you'll see more than one cleaning supply, more mm. than one chemical in it. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is that scientists don't really know what is the health effect of using a mixture of these products. Because these products, one, they interact with each other, mm -hmm. and they're interacting in your body together, mm -hmm. not just yeah. like one yeah. at a time at a time. Um, and that is an area of research that's ongoing. And another thing to notice is that um, it, government regulations, they only require a limited labeling. So not all the ingredients need to be listed in a, in a product. Sometimes they, the company will say it's a trade secret. So that's, that's something and then they don't have to label it. Mm -hmm. So in the next slide, um, what I'd really like to talk to you about is uh, if you're at all interested in pursuing this subject a little bit further and really want to get into it deeper, one thing to look into is what's called the Toxic Substances Control Act. And that started in 1976. And because the act is not, it needs to be strengthened. But right now, the way it is, is that the EPA can't require a manufacturer to conduct safety testing before a chemical goes to market. So that means um, that things can be in, mark, in the market, people like you and me are buying it, and um, total health testing isn't done on it. And the way the law works right now is that the EPA has a 90-day window. So when a company says, you know, I have this new chemical, um, the EPA has 90 days from that to determine whether or not it's risky, too risky for the public. That's not a lot of time. And it's certainly not enough time to understand 
chronic or long-term effects. So you may be able to tell whether or not, you know, obviously if it's corrosive and it may cause a skin burn, but you're not likely to know if it's along the lines will cause cancer or how it will react again with other chemicals that you're mm -hmm. in. And um, so once this chemical is on the market, you, um, as a, the EPA regulators, can only remove it or restrict it um, until a scientist can prove that it's very toxic um, to people or the environment. But because the law is very complex and because of the way it's written, that's very, very difficult to do. So in very rare instances has, has, a, has a chemical ever been banned. So this is since 1976 we're talking. So TUSCA, which is the Toxic Substances Control Act, needs to be revised. Some of our uh, legislators in the Senate or the, the House have tried to uh, put some bills forward that would do that, but it hasn't gotten very far. <laughs> So if you're interested in this subject a little farther and you might want to pursue understanding some more about that, if that's the way you like to work, then I would suggest learning a little bit more about that law and, and, and how you can help. And in the meantime, uh, be very careful what you buy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So knowing this kind of stuff. So um, I'd like to now, uh, in the next slide, go through what are some potential problems with household cleaners. And um, I often like to think of it as the sustainability tripod because sustainability looks at both health impacts, environmental impacts, and economic impacts. So in like regular household cleaners, we talked about how it could contribute to indoor air pollution. We know that some um, cleaning supplies can be poisonous if they're ingested. Uh, they can cause burns because they're strong acids. They are toxic in other ways, like to our liver or our kidneys. Um, and a lot of times they're just irritants, plain old irritants. So, you know, you might get a runny nose. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. Um, bloodshot or, eyes. Uh, yes, bloodshot <laughs> eyes or, or, or something maybe some people would have a hard time breathing. Yes, know? yes. And then, like, when you look at environmental impacts, nowadays you may see on some cleaners that they're biodegradable, and that's a good thing. But if these ingredients aren't safe ingredients, what happens is that some ingredients can break down or degrade into even more toxic substances. Oh, wow. So a lot of people don't think about that, that you could have one chemical in there, and then as it goes through its life cycle, it breaks down into something that's even worse. And it, it all these chemicals threaten our health, the health of wildlife, the health of the fish, and they're in all the media in our earth. They're in the air, they're in the soil, and they're in the water systems. And so um, when a chemical is found to impact fish, please don't think it, it, it won't get to you someday. Um, so if you um, eat fish, it will. <laughs> we're all we're all connected, is yeah, my point, yeah. you know. And yeah. so um, to try and think of it through this larger picture is important. Um, and also, you know, these things can be really expensive. I gave workshops on on green cleaning in in, in Massachusetts, and I asked that question that I asked you all in the beginning, which is how much do you think you spend on an average a month? And some people had a very low amount, five or ten dollars, but some people fifty dollars, you know, or, or more. That's a lot of money to spend from your household income. Yeah, and the inflation has really driven the cost of absolutely everything up too. Uh, yeah, so, I, it's terrible. So it behooves you, and and it's a good thing for you to, if you're looking at your bottom line, to think about some of the cleaners that will be going over at this. Um, talk right now mm -hmm. in this show. So in the next slide, um, we're going to talk a little bit just um, again about health impacts. And, you know, we mentioned a lot now about the, you know, the things that you might see immediately. So let's just say you're using um, a chemical, uh, ammonia, some people use, some people use bleach. Well, these can cause uh, certainly respiratory um, irritation. So um, you know, you're inhaling this and you're like, oh my gosh, this is smelling bad, my nose is itching, my nose doesn't feel good, my eyes are starting to get watery. But really it can range from these kind of, you know, impacts to much more severe ones um, like chemical burns. 
And when you think of a little six-year-old of not knowing what this chemical is underneath the cupboard, um, you know, chemical burns are part of what they could experience, as well as any, like you mentioned, Gail, elders with dementia. Right. And, and also like an asthma attack. So people can have immediate, if you have asthma, an immediate uh, asthma attack if, if it's too strong for you. But a lot of times, you know, as I mentioned, there is these long-term effects that are cancer, there's something called hormone disruption, which I'll talk about in the next slide, um, asthma. Now, some studies have been done about janitors and, oh. um, you know, janitor, they did this long-term study of janitors and janitors are exposed to a lot of pounds of toxic chemicals in their year, uh, every year that they work. And some people that use these cleaning supplies day in, day out in their work environment may have started work without asthma mm -hmm. and end up acquiring asthma. And so this is like a um, new onset asthma. Didn't have it, but now you do. Mm -hmm. um, and reproductive problems, they've been implicated, many of these chemicals, liver damage, kidney damage, and damage to our nervous system. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when you think about it, in, um, like I told you, there was 85,000 new chemicals in, 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 in commerce these days, and many of them haven't been tested. So mm -hmm. when you think about the fact that you're using chemicals not only in cleaning supplies, but cosmetics, your shampoo, right. your laundry right. detergent, you're using them to, I don't know, clean something outside your car, your car. So all this, these chemicals yeah. are part of all these things. And, and then people wind up wondering why they're sick and with these serious health problems. And, yeah. and so, you know, we need to find ways in our culture, in our, in our society, and in our own homes. It starts with, you know, we can be a voice in our own homes to reduce this. And I can tell you that I've done this cleaning, as I said, to like over 200 people. And some, I called up some people two, weeks, uh, two months later and I said, you know, how are you using this? And they were all excited to use these things. And mm -hmm. one woman said to me around Christmas time, she's like, you know, I'm so excited about this that I made these things for my family and I'm giving them as Christmas presents. Oh, what a great idea. So the thing is, you can help promote this in other ways, like with your own family. Um, so these are the health impacts, and I'd like to now talk about the next slide, which is kind of important. Remember that question I asked you at the beginning where people have said, may have said to you, you know, I love these fragrances because they make my house smell so good. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things in our culture is really to learn, which is not what you see a, a lot in, in advertisements, but frag you know, a house is not clean because it smells a certain way. So clean is not a smell. If I clean my house and I don't smell anything, I say, good job, Donna. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, what you will notice if you, when you use safe cleaning products is you don't smell the cleaning products, but what you do notice is any stinky odors are gone. Right. That, that's the smell thing that you'll actually notice is right. that it doesn't smell bad anymore. Right. And, you know, some of these cleaning supplies that I'm going to, we're going to make um, one of them together, use vinegar. So vinegar obviously has a smell, mm -hmm. pickles, like mm -hmm. it's people associated with pickles, but it, it just goes away very quickly. So it's not like your house is going to smell like a pickle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Right, right. <laughs> Something like that. So let's go back to fragrances. Many people don't realize that these smells are made up of, people spend a lot of time making up chemists making up what the smell is, should be like. Mm -hmm. um, lily smells or jasmine mm -hmm. smells mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. But they're not natural smells. They're not natural. They're, they're people, very uh, um, probably highly paid people, trying to think of how to make um, lilies in your house, smell mm -hmm. like lilies in your house. And they can contain up to 3,000 separate ingredients. 3,000. Okay, these uh, various types of ingredients have been implicated in asthma, allergies, reproductive problems, and cancer. Two, th two or three of the most worst ones that are often found in fragrances are something called phthalates. Phthalates are potent hormone disruptors. And octo octoxinols and non-oxinols, now as you see, 
you may think, oh my God, I need to be a chemist to clean my house to understand this, but mm -hmm. octoxanols and non-oxanols break down, they're also hormone disruptors found in fragrances, they break down into persistent hormone disruptors. So they persist. Oh and, gosh. Um, so when you think of a hormone, what is that, right? Mm -hmm. A hormone is like thyroid. Our thyroid, thyroid gives hormones. Thyroid hormones, yes. And it's, it works in our whole body and it helps our metabolism work mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So most of us are very lucky to have a good endocrine system, it's called. Everything functions in a good way. It's, it's a really great, finely tuned system in our body. And it, you only need a little bit of a hormone to make a difference. So mm -hmm. you, your body isn't pumping out a lot of it, it's just a little. And so when your body sees something that looks like mimics a hormone, this is a problem because you just don't need a lot of this to make something happen. Mm -hmm. Also, um, so these hormone disruptors can even either, either seem like mimic a hormone, so it may be turning things on in your body that your body wasn't wanting to turn on, or they can block hormones. So your body wants to maybe turn something on and, and it's blocked. Right. So, and in both of those cases, that's very um, not good. Now, these things can cause cancer, so they can be implicated into like um, estrogen sensitive breast cancer mm -hmm. um, or other kinds of cancers, um, birth defects, and immune problems. And, you know, like I told you, um, children are especially sensitive, and pregnant women need to be especially aware of this because um, a developing fetus or a young child, um, when, you know, um, when a fetus is developing, different things, are, genes are turned on and off throughout the process, and they're all regulated by hormones. So um, the, these, some of these things have been implicated in lower sperm counts and an increase in the rate of male birth defects. Wow. So I want to say to you again, clean is not a smell. It's important for you to um, understand how to clean your house safely right and make it clean but also do it in a way that you aren't exposing yourself and also I should say your pets because pets have little bodies just like children and um, pets lay on the floor and so when you spray an aerosol you know you're spraying it hopefully on, on, a, on a towel but some of the particulates get in the air and they may land on dust particles in your house, and we all have them, no matter how clean you are. Also, oh, dust <laughs> particles move them, move toxins around right. the house. Uh -oh. So, right, you have your little aerosol, and it hits a dust particle, and this dust particle's in the air, and eventually it's going to settle down on your rug or your floor. And there goes your child walking on the floor or your pet. So they're a lot closer to the ground than you are. Um, and so those are also things you need to be aware of. Lots of people don't think about it. So let's talk now about warning labels. So when you go to the grocery store, you know, you are going to see some warning labels on products. And when you see something called danger or poison, harmful, fatal if swallowed, these are chemicals that hopefully you will try your very best not to keep in your house. Um, they are the highest hazard. And um, really, I hope that as we go through this and we learn how to clean more safely with some of these cleaning products, you will find yourself not having these things in your house. <laughs> um, and less hazardous are, are some supplies that say caution or warning. And they may be respiratory irritants or other kinds of irritants. Um, and the label, always, always read the label, right? And the label tells you, because they worked hard at putting these labels on, so the label tells you what can happen if you don't use this in the right way. Um, and then safer, the safest products, is you don't see any kind of warning on, on it at all. And, um, and so I would like you to be aware that when you go in a grocery store, Really try and find products that have nothing special on them. They, they won't say anything at all. Sometimes you will, but in essence, very much avoid the danger and poison ones. 
And I can tell you that there are some, especially drain cleaners, oven cleaners, these are often um, very corrosive or toxic to you. And you can read the label and see for yourself. But um, I'm hopefully going to show you a few ways to clean your house, in the, especially in those ways that may be less hazardous to you. So one thing is in the next slide I'd like to go over is something that's very important for the health of a lot of people. And some people, you know, um, don't realize that when you mix chlorine bleach, and most people have chlorine bleach in their house, but if you mix chlorine bleach with any other cleaner, it's very dangerous. And the reason why is because it produces toxic gases. These gases are known as chloramine gas, and chlorine gas especially, but it can also do other things which I'm not even familiar with. Um, but here's some of the effects. They can range from coughing and nausea, shortness of breath, which certainly would be found by people with asthma, watery eyes, etc. But they can also damage your lungs. And they can cause damage um, in your lungs to such a point where it causes fluid in your lungs. And people have actually died um, and it, because they've mixed um, um, chlorine bleach with certain chemicals. Um, and chlorine gas is one of the gases that not only is absorbed um, through your nasal passages and in your lungs, but it's also absorbed right through your skin. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so, you know, there's yeah. multiple sources of ways you can get exposed. I know uh, it's like um, uh, certain experts say, uh, like as far as cosmetics and things are concerned, to be very careful because uh, uh, to not buy and use anything that you wouldn't eat. Right. If it's not safe to eat, it's not safe to put on your skin. On your skin, and your skin is the largest organ in your body. You don't think right. about it, right? You right. think of an organ like a heart, your kidneys, but your skin is actually the largest organ in your body. So what you put on your skin gets is absorbed often into the body. Right. Yes. Right, and then you're exposed. So going back to that slide about chlorine gas. Um, people with heart and lung problems really should avoid bleach and ammonia because they're very strong. Mm -hmm. and they, and, but a lot of times I want to make you familiar with chlorine and ammonia forms toxic ammonia, chlor chloramine gas. Mm -hmm. And ammonia products are found in things you may not always think about. So ammonia cleaner obviously, glass and window cleaners, um, paints but also in urine things that had urine in it. So your oh cat litter gosh. box, right? Because your urine has litter, uh, uh, a diaper pail that you may think of. So you don't think necessarily about these as places that you might associate with ammonia. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then chlorine bleach. Like chlorine gas, I think, has been used in World War I or World War II. Does anybody know? But I think it was one of those um, gases that were used in a war. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, chemical warfare. Chemical yes. warfare, right? So chlorine bleach and acids um, and uh, will form chlorine gas. Now again. It, yeah, I see that. Uh, it, I read somewhere in here your information that it said even vinegar. Yes. Even vinegar. Thank you for mentioning that. Vinegar is 5% acid. So obviously we use vinegar we eat vinegar. We put it on our salads, right, and salad dressing and stuff like that. But it is a, a weak acid. So even a weak acid mixing with chlorine bleach is dangerous. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. vinegar, but again, you can see for yourself these other things. Toilet bowl and drain cleaners, again, are extremely acidic. They can cause you burns. And so obviously they have a much stronger acid. And just don't mix these things up. And other things, oven cleaners, hydrogen peroxide, insecticides. So basically, I can't say enough, please don't mix bleach with anything else. Besides water, you can bleach in water because you want to dilute, dilute bleach if you're using oh, yeah. it. Oh, uh, yeah, water is the only thing that you can mix it with. <laughs> right, right, right. So yeah. um, other tips. When you're going to clean your house, clean using the right dilution. Uh, a lot of people don't read the label. And like I was at a friend's cafe and they were cleaning up, they were closed for the day. 
and the guy at the end, the dishwasher, was cleaning the floors. And he, you know, uh, my friend said to me, oh, they just don't think about how much they put in the bucket. So they put a lot in the bucket, and then, you know, I was really knocked off my socks with the smell. Mm -hmm. So really use the right dilution, not too much, mm -hmm. not too little. Mm -hmm. And also, as best you can, when you clean, use good ventilation. If it's in the summertime, open the windows, put a fan on. You know, you don't think about, you sticking your head in an oven, it's a really? enclosed space. Yeah. You're thinking, you're sticking your head in your tub because you're scrubbing the tub. Right. Um, it's an enclosed sort of space. It's right. You're not getting all this fresh air. And so you want to be able to sort of do it right and then follow the directions. So a lot of times they'll say, wear gloves, wear gloves. Then, mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, another good thing, you know, uh, when you, if you're going to insist on using toxic chemicals to clean your house, not only gloves, but... Um, it's not a bad idea to be wearing uh, a pair of safety goggles and maybe a dust mask or something. Mm -hmm. yes. You know? Uh, safety I, goggles are actually a good idea in case, I never thought of it, but in case of splashes. But um, the, the dust mask itself, I will say that dust, dust masks don't stop. Oh, don't they? Uh, uh, volatile compounds it only stops gases. dust it only stops dust oh. it only does what it says it does oh and so oh. if you wanted something that stopped gas it would be more expensive it and you have to really read the label what gases does it stop mm -hmm. so going back that to would be like some sort of a respirator yeah, or something kind of things. something like a person that uh, has a job a hazmat job yes, would wear right. i mean there are some um, you might find at Home Depot, but I'm just not sure enough about them mm -hmm. to know that, that. But a lot of people do think dust masks are all I need, and that's, that's actually... I guess uh, I thought um, it would protect me, but apparently yes. only from dust. Yes. <laughs> so or whatever it says, right? <laughs> at, least, at least it can protect me from uh, getting a sneezing attack when I'm dusting. And that's true, yeah. especially if you haven't dusted in a while, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, the next topic I want to talk about is disinfectants. And we've all heard about those superbugs that um, are now get coming up in our society and they're resistant to antibiotics. And um, these are somewhat caused in part by the overuse of disinfectants. And what a lot of people really just don't know is that disinfectants are registered pesticides. They're pesticides. So just as you would not use a pesticide all over your house, when you grab your disinfectant, say to yourself, this is a pesticide. I'm gonna use it only when I need to and only where I need to, you know, kind of thing like that. So in the next slide, um, this is a little busy of a slide, but I do wanna talk a little bit about what these terms mean because we all hear, let's clean the house. I'm gonna sanitize this. I'm going to disinfect this. And they all have slightly different meanings. So um, let's say, for example, you have made yourself some toast in the morning and you got all those toast crumbs all over the place. Um, you're going to remove those toast crumbs with soap and water and scrubbing, right? Not, right. Maybe, you may not need to scrub it, but like, say, dirt or mm -hmm. something like that. So every time you see some visible dirt, that's, and you're using soap, water, and your own elbow grease, that's cleaning. Okay, cleaning is when you use a microfiber cloth, and we're going to talk a little bit about microfiber cloths later, but this is a microfiber cloth. Microfiber cloths have been shown to reduce bacterial load on a surface like by 98, 99% and virus loads. So it's not just using your old t-shirt, but it's using a mi good microfiber cloth and you're using just soap and water and this microfiber cloth and this will clean a surface very well. Now, think about going to a restaurant. You would hope that public health codes show that you need to sanitize, obviously, the dishes and the countertops and things like that. So that's sanitizing. And basically, that's removing microbes to a level that's deemed safe by public health code, public health standards. So they're reducing, but not necessarily eliminating it. But that's OK. Not all microbes and germs are bad for us, You know, just certain ones. So sanitizers can you be used on porous surfaces, like um, upholstered furniture. So for example, I just recently bought 
on a consignment shop some upholstered chairs and they have to be sanitized that's the public health code okay but um, they can also be some sanitizers are then used for non-porous surfaces like a wall or a floor or something like that hard surfaces so these can sanitizers for example can be either chemicals like certain kind of chemicals they can be a dishwasher so some Dishwashers in restaurants are labeled as sanitizing, and that means something. It's, it's, it's a certain kind of dishwasher. So sanitizing, um, again, can be used. There are some sanitizers that used on food contact surfaces and on food itself, and some that are not used on food products. But they're all called sanitizers, so you need to, again, read the label. Does this work on a non-food surface, a food surface? What, what does it do? How do I use it? And a disinfectant, on the other hand, destroys germs. So, but not necessarily their spores. So spore is like a little tiny thing that you can rarely see, but um, they can last and last in the environment, like a, like a fungi. Fungi mm -hmm. put out spores. Right. Um, but again, remember it's a, a disinfectant. And again, remember that not all germs are dangerous. So you're, there's going to be only certain times you need to use a disinfectant. Um, so, and the other thing to be aware of is that only used on non-porous surfaces, like a hard non-porous surface, like a desk. And you don't, you know, they don't all work on the same things. So some things that may work on a flu virus don't work on TB virus. Oh, And TB, right. I mean, bacteria. Not yeah. TB isn't a virus. But so bacteria, like, for example, tuberculosis, is very hard to, it's more resistant. And so like you have to, if that was ever your worry, but it probably isn't in most people's houses, um, that would require a different kind of maybe disinfectant than something that you might use for your house. So here's a good rule to remember in the next slide. If it's wet and comes from somebody else's body, it can be infectious. And so it's needed in situations that involves like vomit, body fluids, feces, blood. Okay, that, those are situations where you might think of, you want to think about disinfecting. Um, and a very good resource that I'm giving you is this little thing, you need to put it in a Google search, um, but it's a nice chart that tells you a lot of different kinds of disinfectants, what they work on, what their dangers are, both environmentally and to, the, um, to your health. So I found this and I, I thought it was a good resource. So, but in the next slide, you might say to yourself, well, I do want to clean my house. I want to make it as clean and healthy as possible. Soap and water. Soap and water, a microfiber cloth, the best and least toxic way to help in your house prevent germs and infections. Mm -hmm. So in the next slide, you're going to see that lots of people, when they do use Lysol, they don't use it right. They don't use disinfectants proper, in, properly. And if you, don't use, to 20 minutes. Okay, if you don't use it properly, then it's going to kill the weaker germs and the more resistant germs are going to survive. So what's an incorrect use? It means that you're going to spray Lysol without first cleaning up all the visible dirt. Clean first, then disinfect. That's the rule. You're going to wipe or rinse it off. So you're going to spray it on and you're going to take your towel and immediately rinse it off. You have to look at the label because you're not doing any good if you don't leave it for the certain dwell time, which is like, that's, that's a term. You have to read the label. It'll sanitize after two minutes and it'll disinfect after 10. You gotta leave it on that long. Um, not using enough of it and not cleaning first. So even if it's a combination cleaner and disinfectant, gotta clean the visible dirt first. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to, I, I think we have very limited time, so I'm gonna wanna tell you about high touch surfaces in your house, like your faucets, like your doorknobs, like your light switches. Use soap and water often, use a microfiber cloth. So um, if you want to look at this microfiber cloth in the next slide, then too, you can see it. But this is a microfiber cloth. They're not all the same quality, so buy some good microfiber cloths, buy different colors. Microfiber cloths have a high surface area because they're made in such a way, it's called a denier or something, but each of these little things has a, can be cut as fine as a human hair. So a microfiber cloth, when you wash a surface, and even just using water, nothing else than water, and you just wet this microfiber cloth and wipe the surface, 
It has such a high surface area that it's picking up and drawing out 99% of bacteria. This is great. And they've done some studies, you know, those old mops with cotton mops. You wash a floor with that, 30% of the bacteria are taken away. Wash it with a microfiber a mop, 99%. Okay. So um, that's the difference. And, so, and then you have to really read up about it, how to, take, to care for it, because don't dry it on high heat. Don't use lint with it, because it just clogs up all these nice little surface areas that you really want to use. So that's, I would suggest to you, find a good source. Here's some myths. Um, the next slide. If it's on the shelf, it's safe. Again, we said don't assume that. And don't assume that if it says it's green, natural, eco-friendly, that it's safe. So I want to show you a little bit. Um, on the next slide, you're going to see that I'm going to say to you to shop for products that list all the ingredients, are biodegradable, are plant-based but not petroleum-based, pH neutral. So again, not a strong acid, not a strong base, like an oven cleaner and a drain cleaner, or a toilet bowl cleaner, these are very strong. If you can avoid those things, please do. Um, those are the ones with danger and poison. Package them not in aerosol, but in a pump spray, and are third party certified. This means that another objective person, a, a lab, has looked at this product and analyzed it, and these are some of the labels you may see on a product. I've put some products out here that probably we may not have time to look at, but this is a, um, yeah, I don't think we can get to this, but I want to read to you. It says it's a dish soap that's non-toxic, hypoallergenic, biodegradable, safe for septic systems, doesn't have any dyes or allergens, no fragrances that are synthetic, no chemical preservatives. These, you want to you wanna try and look for products that say these things. Another product uh, I like is this Bonami, and it just says five simple ingredients, and it lists them all. So, you know, when you look for products, it says it's hypoallergenic, no chlorine, perfume, or dye. These are kind of things you might want to look for in the grocery store. That's the only, that's the only kind of uh, cleanser that I will use. Right. Uh, it's the only one I've used for many years. So I think it's important to know what you're looking for. So I'm going to now, in the next slide, tell you all you need for green cleaning. And so you need uh, everything you have. I'm telling you, you almost always have this in your house except for two things. Vinegar, baking soda. Okay, so we eat these things, we make cookies out of these things, so safe. Distilled water, we can drink this stuff, right? Another thing that we need is Castile soap. And um, this is called um, uh, Dr. Bronner's soap. And this is the nicest one and the things I find most frequently. And it's a very gentle, vegetable, plant-based soap. And right. often it's peppermint. Oh, you smell peppermint. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 So, yes. But they come in other flavors, but, you don't, you don't, it, but they use all these natural um, essences. Mm -hmm. So they're not synthetic essences. Mm -hmm. So see how simple your cleaning can be. And That's supposed to be the best kind of soap to use if you've been in touch with uh, poison ivy. Oh, really? I never heard yeah, that. Yeah, okay. yeah, to wash, it, that. wash off the poison ivy oil. So in the next slide, um, and uh, we're not going to take a lot of time on this, but these ingredients, um, oh, is that Oops. the, no, the one, oh, we the, the mozo bags. Let me tell you a little bit about mozo bags. Okay. Okay. So we talked about the microfiber cloths. So that's your next thing that you want here. And uh, I'm used to doing this in front of an audience. A mozo bag. This is a mozo bag. It says mozo. And um, in the slide, they come in different sizes. So this is the one that you put in a shoe to keep odors away from your oh, shoe, for yes, example. Yes, yes. But they come in um, much bigger ones for like certain size rooms. So think about bamboo and all those little holes in bamboo. Well, a mozo bag is, is bamboo charcoal. It has lots of little caveats. It absorbs odors from bacteria. It absorbs bacteria, chemicals from the air. It's fragrance-free. It's non-toxic. It lasts for two years. All you have to do once a month is stick this thing outside for a few hours, bring it back inside. It's good for another month. It's good for two years. And the best thing about it is after two years, you break it up and you put it in your garden. 
Oh, okay. okay. I, I like that. Yeah. And yeah. you can't go wrong. I've never it, I've never heard of it, but uh, it it ref it gets it to working again by setting it outside for a while. Absolutely. And what happens is a so a group I worked with had a mildewy bathroom. So I told them about Mosul bags. They bought a bigger one. So when you go online or in a store to look for this, it's online. Um, it's for a room. So they bought a bigger one for this little room. And within a week, they called me up and said, this is great. Where can I get these? Yeah, so, yeah, where can you get them? So I, I want to know. <laughs> yeah. When I found these, I found these um, online, as I said. But I think that they may also be in some pet shops. Oh, pet stores, Carrie. So okay. I'm, not, I'm not clear because I haven't looked okay. in a while, but yes, that's true. So in the next slide, these are the green uh, cleaning agents that I'm talking to you about. And um, they all have different things, but they deodorize, they shine. Olive oil is one of them. And I know you have that in, in, your, in your cupboard. At so least we hope you do. We hope you do. So these are cleaning, the, all we need to clean. And in the next slide, um, like I said, I used with, wor worked with the Toxics Use Reduction Lab. And many people don't know, if you use full strength, 100%, you know, just vinegar that you buy, um, and you just don't dilute it, but you just use regular vinegar, and um, you put it, you spray it on a surface, it'll reduce the bacterial count from one million to one if you leave it on for one minute on a clean surface. So that's something to Wow, know. yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good for something <laughs> as non-toxic <laughs> right. as vinegar. Right, yeah. right. So um, here's some cost comparisons. And I think um, some of these green cleaning recipes I'm going to give you, you know, um, when you make them, we're going to talk about glass cleaners, et cetera. They range in price when you make them with these products, vinegar, baking soda, range in, in you see, from... A, up to five dollars but when you buy them pre-made and i just looked at a range of different ones they went up to 25 dollars so in the next slide you can see that if um i buy um baking soda white vinegar and dr bronner's castile soap and that is the most expensive one i'll tell you it generally ranges for 32 ounces for 12 dollars so You'll say that's expensive, it'll last you for a long time. Yeah, it is a very long lasting a long, long product. Time. Yeah. And you're diluting it. Don't Even if it. when I buy a little tiny bottle of it, it lasts a long time right. for hand washing. Yeah, right. It lasts a really long time. Yeah. So, so what you want to be aware of is that you can make a lot of things. I'm, I was able to make, um, with the supply of Castile soap I had, a lot of um, all-purpose cleaners, um, four quarts of toilet bowl cleaner, one quart of glass cleaner, and I clean my oven two times. It cost me about $16.63. But if I did this and bought more commercial types of cleaners, I came up with $44.26 just using kind of middle of the road stuff. So you're saving a lot of money, plus you're saving any health care costs. So let's go on now to the green cleaning recipes. And in the next slide, I just want to tell you that one of the things you need is a funnel. You need a um, spray bottle that you can get from Walmart, uh, dollar store, whatever. Oops. Um, and a set of um, just, just regular um, measuring cups and measuring spoons. That's all you need. And um, the funnel. And, and there's the spray and bottle. And the spray bottle. And I brought, this, um, I brought this marker because it's easy for you to forget to label. So I li what I do on mine is I label them all-purpose cleaner, and right on the bottle I write the recipe. Because then it stops me from having to look at the piece of paper again. I know the recipe if it, I run out. So what I'd like to do right now um, is make one of these so you see how easy it is. And then the subsequent slides are more recipes for you. So um, we're going to just make this cleaning supply because a lot of people think, oh my god, it's too complicated for me. And um, so let me do this while I'm talking to you. And I don't know, um, if Gail, if you want to help me a little bit. Oh, OK. Uh, okay. What do you want me to do? So you put in two cups of water in there. Two cups of water, or two cups with a measuring cup. Yes, and here's the measuring okay. cup. Yep. All righty. Well, 
Okay, this is a teaspoon. I'm going to put in two teaspoons of vinegar. And Gail, you can take the tablespoon, and after I put the vinegar in, you're going to put in two tablespoons of Castile soap. Oh, okay. Okay. So here is the vinegar. Again, it's just something you have around in your house. Oops, it's a little bit more, but it doesn't matter. And two. Uh, okay. And two tablespoons. And two tablespoons of the soap. Okay. And then we need a half a teaspoon of the baking soda, which again you probably have in your house. So there you go, there's the baking soda. I'm going to add a little dab of water to get the baking soda down. I should have added that a little first. That's okay. Okay. Hey, one minute, done. We're good. Yeah. Here is your all-purpose cleaner that you can put. Now me, I make two, two bottles, and I put one in the bathroom, and I put one in the kitchen, and basically just mix it around because you got your baking soda in there, so you want to make sure it's dissolved. This has been shown to have the same cleaning properties as 409 all-purpose cleaner by the Turi study. Hmm. So that's that. Um, now, I know we don't have a whole lot of time left, and I'd like to go through quickly some of these recipes with you. Um, and you can find some of these recipes also on one of the links I'm going to give you. So that's the all-purpose cleaner. You saw me make that. Um, next thing that I want to do is a glass cleaner again. Very simple. One cup of vinegar, one cup of water, put it on a paper towel, clean your glass. Fingerprints, so soap scones, odor, all that is removed by this glass cleaner. Second is a toilet bowl cleaner. Now, please, like, if I tell you, toilet bowl cleaners that you buy are very strong acids. They can burn you. So if you can do something clean, uh, much more safer, here's where I would do this. A fourth of a cup of baking soda in the toilet bowl, a cup of distilled water, I mean, distilled um, white vinegar. Mix it together with your toilet bowl brush. Pour it, mix it together in anything. And then pour it down the toilet bowl. Let it sit for three minutes and then scrub it with your brush. So I, I generally just put the baking soda right in the toilet bowl. I put a cup of distilled white vinegar right in the toilet bowl, and I take my toilet brush and wash it all around and let it sit for a little bit. Well, one thing I wanted to mention, when I clean my toilet bowl, I pour a bucket of water in, and that lowers the um, water level uh -huh. to where there's only a little bit down yep. in the very bottom by the drain there. And I found that uh, toilet bowl cleaners were, are much more effective um, when you get all that water out of the way. Yes, so I think that's probably a good thing. Now, some people may have problems with rust, and I'm not knowledgeable about this part of a green cleaning recipe, but by and large, cleaning your toilet bowl with this and, and not having that thing that's the blue stuff that makes your toilet blue all, that's all the time. That's toxic too, right? That also is, 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 if you can avoid that, avoid it. So the next one is a floor cleaner. How simple, water and vinegar. So, you know, um, you don't need a whole lot of complicated things to clean your house. And I hope that, that you can try some of these recipes on your own. On um, a tile floor, sometimes I will put a little squirt of my um, non-toxic um, dish detergent or a little bit of the Castile soap, not a lot, um, if, I, if I want a little soap in there, mm -hmm. but in general. Yeah, I found that actually you can clean a lot of things with your dish detergent, not, yes. just, not just dishes. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, for something that's kind of a mild, uh, a, just a squirt in a bucket of water Absolutely. of dish detergent, and you can do other, you know, things that you would do with a cleaning yep. cloth uh, yep. that and, you would wash. And the other thing to mention is you're going to use a microfiber cloth. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a good one, not just, because I bought microfiber cloths from just, like, cheaper ones, and they just, they're not the best. Mm -hmm. and they let go of all this fuzz, and they're not doing what they say mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. should do. Mm -hmm. So um, buy a green one for your kitchen, say, a yellow one for your bathroom. Mm -hmm. Different that, colors yeah, for different the different colors. rooms. Well, you know, another thing that I have a few of at home is uh, dust mitts made out of microfiber. Okay. And uh, 
you know, the dust all just sticks mm -hmm. to the microfiber mitt instead of flying up into the air while you're dusting right. objects. So that helps a lot yep. that way. Yep. And then they and then they can be washed in the washing machine with. And again, watch what kind of cleaners you use. Um, liquid cleaners, I think, are best. And also, sometimes if it's not anything really dirty, you could just rinse it in water. Oh, the mitts? The mitts or the cloth. Oh, okay. okay. So really pay attention to how you, clean, you, how you take care of your microfiber cloth. So the next um, one is this clogged drain. So it's, it's the, the toilet bowl cleaner, the clogged drain recipe, and the oven cleaners. These are recipes that when you switch to safer ones, you're really reducing a lot of the dangerous stuff in your house. So clog drain cleaner, um, again, caution, you know, never use these ingredients when, if you say, for example, used a commercial cleaner, and then immediately you said to yourself, oh, Donna told me, or this show told me about this, don't put them together. Mm -hmm. Because um, mm -hmm. what I'm going to say to you is that they can, again, be toxic, let out toxic gases and things. So, so let's just say you have your, your, you just brushed your teeth and you notice it's going it's kind of slow. And so now you're going to take a half a cup of baking soda, you're going to take five tablespoons or so of water, it's not exact, and make a little slurry. You're going to put that little slurry down the sink, okay? Then you're going to add distilled white vinegar and just regular vinegar. And you're gonna saw here this frothing, right? And it's forming these gases that aren't toxic and you are just gonna loosen the things that are in your drain. And um, then it'll fizz, so you leave it there for a little bit while, you flush it down with some hot water and if it's still clogged, you might wanna try that again or you might wanna um, just take a small, I found um, somewhere a very small, um, uh, plunger and I would plunge my bathroom sink with that. Yeah and there's another thing that you can do that you don't even have to monkey with this with that I've got at home it's like a long plastic thing with sharp edges yeah. around it and you put that down in yeah. the drain and then pull it out and it'll actually pull all of that gunk out of the drain. Right. You know and then you can throw the gunk in the trash. Yes. And that also um, is a very good thing so if you can use mechanical means to do it then do that. Um, but I'm saying these clog drain, many of the cleaners are very dangerous for people. The dust away furniture polish one, um, the only extra ingredient besides water and vinegar is a little bit of olive oil. And you know, you make this up and you can also use, if you like a smell um, of, of like lemons or something, use an essential oil. You can add 20 drops. Or if you can't find an essential oil, it's a little too expensive for you, um, go to the grocery store, the baking aisle, and go and find not the artificial, but the pure lemon extract. And you're gonna, because it's a little bit more dilute, you need to add a little bit more. So beside, instead of 20 drops, you're gonna add 3 fourths of a teaspoon. So you're gonna add a little bit more of the pure extract. But that smells really good, great for your furniture. Use a microfiber cloth, you're sucking it all up. Now, um, finally, the oven cleaner. The oven cleaner, again, these are really toxic things. So if you have a cold oven, you want to clean your oven, I can't think of a better recipe that tells you how to clean and then go to bed. So basically, you just make a little baking soda water slurry, put it on the bottom of your oven, and just keep spritzing it with water so that it's wet, stays wet. Make a little slurry, put it on the sides of your oven, and just keep spraying it until you go to bed with water and then go to bed. The next day, you just can get a sponge or something, paper towels, whatever you want, and just wipe it off. And that comes out, and most of the dirt comes out with it. And if you spilled something on the oven, let's just say at some point you're making a pie or something, it, something spills on your oven, wait till the oven cools off, and then um, add a little salt onto it, and wait a little while, and then take it off. So cover, ovens, are again in closed spaces and sticking your head in with a very toxic thing is not a great idea. No. So baking soda and um, water and that's it. So finally I have two last things for you. I'm telling you about clean, green cleaning supplies so you might have other more toxic things in your in your closet. So don't go ahead and pour this all down the drain because you said I'm switching to these cleaning things because those things are toxic. 
So it's going to pollute your water system, it's going to pollute mine, and it's going to harm the aquatic life. So what you want to do is wait, hang on to those things, and Chautauqua County has a hazardous waste drop-off day. Usually they have, I think, three of them. That's when disposal of these things are free. And um, it's usually around June to September, I heard, you know, in different spots in around the country. In the warm weather months, yes. In the warm weather, right? And so you want to check the Chautauqua County website for the 2019 dates, which I don't think have come out yet, or call them. And there's a phone number for more information. And I can't tell you how happy the earth would be if you used the hazardous waste this drop off day. So um, go and find out that information. It's very easy. Now, this, I'm sorry, it translated very small print. Um, but I, I wanted to give you, share with you some websites that may work for you. Um, the Poison Control Center has some information. The Environmental Working Group, that's a really great site. And as part of that site, it will rank 2,000 household cleaning products. Um, and I'm not sure we can do this live um, to look at this. But basically, if you pressed on this link of the 2,000, you'll see this on their website. There you go. Thank you. Um, you'll get to this page, and it says, see, search more than 2,500 cleaning products. You can put something you may be familiar with, you may have in your uh, house, um, a cleaning project, product um, like, I don't know, Spick and Span or something like that, Mr. Clean. And when you press, you'll see that it gives you a score that's a little bit off the page. There it is. So it'll say B, B, D. But overall, um, it'll, it'll tell you the ingredients in this. So if you clicked on Mr. Clean antibacterial cleaner and you clicked on that, it has a score of B, and then if you clicked on that in individual cleaner, it'll give you exactly what's in it and why they think it's good or better or worse for you. And um, going back to the slide of websites, um, there's, there's another site called Women's Voices for the Earth. It has some nice fact sheets and recipes. There's the Toxics Use Reduction Institute at, at the University of Massachusetts at Lowell. They're a really great resource. And um, you just have to find the community and put in on the search household cleaning. And you'll see the, some of the recipes I'm giving you today um, off to the side. You can get a little few of these recipes online. And then you'll also see a video. Um, actually, it's me because I was doing these things. And you can see some more information that might not have been presented today. And then finally, um, there's a good general resource. This is for early care and childhood education center, so it's a lot more technical. But I found that their introduction was really good. And so if you're a little interested in general information, especially at the beginning of that large report, um, you might want to look into that and read it, um, get more information for yourself. So anyway, that's the end of it, Gail. Um, oh, OK. Well, I am so happy that you uh, came today uh, to talk on my program about this very important subject and Thank what you. people can do to protect themselves and, and the environment. Um, uh, well, I hope a lot of people take your advice. <laughs> Maybe uh, they can uh, make it for a present for their family. <laughs> yeah, that would be a great Christmas idea if they haven't done their Christmas shopping yet and they don't have very much money to spend um it's a good idea it's a fun gift to give people right, i think right and it doesn't as gail said doesn't have to cost you a lot and um, a lot of these things you already have in your house so, so thank you for being on today okay gail thank you sure and i'll see the rest of you on my next episode in two weeks